right, so now that know, we know how to compute a few derivatives, let's talk about what do derivatives mean. What does a derivative mean? How do we interpret that? Okay, so here we have three functions. So these are the ones I had in lecture today. We have uh, f of x equals minus 2x plus 3 here. This one is f of x 10. And this one over here is f of x. I think this is like x minus 2. There's Okay, so we have three linear functions, right? And we saw that for linear functions, we can uh, compute the derivative by just looking at the slope. So go back and watch the last couple videos if you want to see the whole derivation of where this comes from. But right now I'll just jump answer. So here, f prime of x, just negative 2, the slope of this line, right? Here, f prime of x is equal to 1, which is the slope of that line. And here the slope is 0, right? So the derivative is equal to 0. So what does this mean? Well, this function is decreasing, right? From left to right, as x goes up, f goes down. So we say that this function is decreasing, right? We'd say f is decreasing, right? And what does a negative derivative mean, right? Negative derivative means that the you know, instantaneous rate of change is negative at every x value for, for this function. So if the instantaneous rate of change is negative, then that would also mean that your function is decreasing. Right? If you look over some interval of your x's, and over that interval, you are decreasing, and then you make that interval really small so that you're just looking at the instant in x, right? So just at that x value, your function is decreasing, right? Because the uh, slope of that tangent line there, right, is negative. Right? You're going down at that point. Uh, on the other side, right, when this is going up from left to right, this function is increasing, right? F is increasing. Okay, and then our derivative is positive, right? So that means the instantaneous rate of change at every point is positive at every x, which is another way of saying, okay, if my instantaneous rate of change is positive, then at this moment, you know, at this point x, my function has a positive slope, that means it's increasing. F is increasing. Okay, and then when it's zero, right, the rate of change is zero, it's not changing at all, right? Uh, let's do this. this green. Rate of change equals zero, right? F is constant, not changing. Right? It's not increasing or decreasing. The rate of change is zero, it's constant, okay? And so for linear functions, it has the same derivative everywhere, so it's always decreasing constant increasing, but maybe a more complicated function, like this one here. This will be our f of x now. So this here is our function, f of x is equal to x squared, right? And in the previous video we showed that this is, as a derivative, f prime of x is equal to 2x. Okay, so this function on the right, we look at the graph of it, it is decreasing here, f is decreasing on the left, on the right, f is increasing. And exactly at zero, right, it's neither increasing or decreasing, right, it's constant at that, you know, moment right here, from step one to step two, it's decreasing, right? But here, it's really not increasing or decreasing, right? Because it depends on which direction you move. Okay, so if we look at the derivative of this function, it should correspond to this information, right? When f is decreasing, that's for x zero, right? If we read this graph, f is decreasing as long as x is less than zero. And if we look at our derivative, 
for x less than zero, the derivative is negative, right? So when the derivative is negative, prime of x is negative, this corresponds to when the original function is decreasing, okay? And the same thing up here, right? When f prime of x is positive, right? From zero to infinity, right? This goes from zero to infinity, or x bigger than zero, right? That's the same thing as when f is increasing, right? They're doing the same. If your derivative is positive, your function is increasing. Positive. Okay, and then if we look at our derivative exactly at zero, okay, the derivative at this point, f prime at zero, is equal to zero, right, which corresponds to the fact that f is constant. Okay, so if we were to draw the tangent line here, right, we'd say the tangent here is flat. Right? Or zero slope, right? Which corresponds to the value of our derivative there. But, okay? So, you know, just being able to kind of work from the graph of one function to the graph of the other function, right? From the graph of a function to the graph of its derivative, kind of a useful skill to kind of understanding how derivatives are telling us information about the functions that they're the derivative of. Okay, so let's say that this is our function derivative, right? Let's say this is our f prime of x is some function. Right? So derivative of some function. What does this tell us about the, the original function f of x? Okay, so this is our derivative. What does it tell us about f? Well, we saw that when f prime of x is positive, Right? That means that f is increasing. So let's look for that on the graph, right? So where is our function's derivative positive? So this is the graph of f prime. Right? So it's positive up to here. And it's positive for these x values from you know negative infinity to negative one. And it's positive from zero to one. Right, so these are the intervals where my derivative function is positive, there's a positive value there, so that's where my function f is increasing. Right? On the other hand, when f prime of x is negative, okay, that tells you where the function that this is the derivative of tells you where the function is decreasing. Okay, so if we look at our derivative function, right, that would be from here to here. That's where our function is negative. And same thing from here on. Right, so from negative 1 to 0 and 1 to infinity, our derivative is negative, which means our function is decreasing. Okay? And so then what happens at these points in between? Right, so where we're piecing together increasing versus decreasing, right? These three points here, right? At x equals negative one, zero, and one, the derivative is equal to zero, right? F is constant at those three points. Constant for that, you know, moment in time, or that moment in x. Okay? So we call these critical points. Okay. These are Critical points. Oops. These are critical points of f of x is where the derivative is zero because they're kind of, you know, they're not these nice intervals where it's either increasing or decreasing. They're really these points at which the function kind of switches behavior. Right? And and we'll talk more about these uh, later, but for now just a critical point is where the derivative is zero. And another critical point uh, well, we'll get into more critical points, but here let's let's try to do the same thing with this function. Right, so let's say that this is uh, f prime of x. Um, f, right? We can play the same game. 
uh, sorry, let's make this f of x, some function f of x. Right, this is just some function f of x. So what does its derivative look like? Okay, so you know where this function is increasing, that will tell us where our derivative is positive or negative. Okay, so f is increasing implies that f prime of x is positive. Right? And so where is our function increasing? Well, it's increasing from negative infinity all the way up to this point here, which is about 0 0.6. And then it's also increasing from about here, right, 0 0.6 off to infinity. Right, so from negative infinity, negative 0 0.6, and 0 0.6 infinity. Okay? And then where f is decreasing, that tells us that f prime of x is negative. Okay, so where does that happen? Well, it happens between these two points, right? That's where you're decreasing from one hill to the value of the other, right? So that would be between negative 0 0.6. Okay, so that's where our derivative would be negative. So if we were to sketch this, this, okay, so let's mark down these critical points. Okay, so our critical points are then uh, these two, okay? f is constant at x equals negative 0 0.6 and x equals 0 0.6, right? That's where the derivative is 0, right? Because it has to be 0 because before it was positive, then it switched to negative, so it has to be 0 in between, right? And if we look at the tangent lines here, right, the tangent lines have 0 slope. These are critical points of our function. Okay, so I didn't draw those very flat, but they're supposed to be flat. So if we're trying to sketch what the derivative would look like, without trying to be you know too precise about this, we have critical points at negative 0 0.6 and 0 0.6. So that is where our derivative will be zero. Okay. And we know that it is positive on the left. And on the right, right, from negative infinity to negative 0.6 and 0 0.6 to infinity. So we know it's positive over here, positive over here, and then in the middle, right, between negative 0.6 and 0.6, it's decreasing. Okay, so we know that the derivative is negative in the middle. So our function should look something like this. So we'll have positive values. Have positive values, negative values, and then have to turn around and go back to positive values. All right, so it's going to look something like an x squared graph, but down a bit. Okay, and so we built this just from kind of analyzing where our original function was positive, or sorry, was increasing or decreasing, tells us where our derivative is positive or negative, and when it's zero right, at these critical points here. Okay, there's a few other types of critical points. Okay, so other critical points are where our function, uh, not only where the function has zero derivative, but where it has uh, no derivative. Where f of x has no derivative, right? So this would be a place where you would say that f is not differentiable at these points. Okay, so this is just kind of some technical language that we're not really going to use in this class, but differentiable means you can take the derivative of it. Not differentiable means you can't, at least at that point. Okay, here's an example function where there's a couple problem points. Okay, so this is some weird piecewise defined thing. The first problem, right, uh, problem one, critical points of this new new critical points are where you have a jump. Right? You have a jump discontinuity. 
Right, so in this case, right, that happens at x equals 1. Right? You have a jump from here to here. So what would the derivative there be? Right, It has kind of one derivative here, one derivative there, but really this is like an infinite jump. If you're trying to calculate the slope between these two points, it kind of jumps discontinuously, but has no derivative there. There's no way to kind of define that. Okay, so, you know, the example here would be at x equals 1. There's a jump discontinuity, but our function's not differentiable there, so we call that a critical point of the function. Another one would be a uh, sharp corner. Cusp. Right, so that would be right here. Right, you can see that this is kind of coming in with constant slope, and then abruptly it shifts to this other kind of curvier function. Right, so this happens at x equals 2, or sorry, x equals 3. Right? And here's where you have a corner. Right? So the derivative on one side might be one thing, the derivative on the other is a different function. And so those values wouldn't agree, and so they'd have kind of a no definable derivative at this point. And so in this case, that x equals two. Right? So where there's no derivative, we call that a critical point because our function has no derivative value there. And then the third problem is when you have a kind of infinite slope. Okay, so that would be here. You would draw the tangent line here, right? Tangent line here would be straight up and down, right? Which has a slope of infinity, right? That's kind of like a constant function, which is x equals some value, right? So there's no, there's no slope for that line. Right? So here that happens at our four. x equals okay and this doesn't just show up in you know pretty absurd functions like this one it happens in some pretty common ones okay so this is f of x equals absolute value of x which you can define you know piecewise uh, let me rewrite as x x positive or negative x, x negative. Okay, so negative x values, it gives you the positive value. Positive x values, it just gives you x. Right, so here, at this point here, f has no derivative at this point. You have a sharp corner, right? And if you think about this, right, if I take the derivatives, right, I can take the derivative of each side separately, right? That'd be one for x less than zero, sorry, bigger than zero. The slope is just one, right? This is just a straight line, constant slope, so I can take the derivative, it's one. It's negative one for x negative, right? This is just a straight line. But then at x equals zero, right, what would this derivative be? Derivative has to be, you know, one smooth value between the two of these, right? So it can't jump from one to negative one. It can't just pass through, you know, zero or something. It's really, you know, either negative one or one. I think this is graph of that. Oh. So. so my derivative would look like this, right? Positive x. 1, negative x, minus 1, and then it has to jump between these two, right? So at x equals 0, it's undefined, right? So x equals 0 would then be a critical point. It is a critical point of, of x because it's a place where the derivative doesn't exist. Right? Critical points are when Critical points of f of x are where f prime of x is equal to zero or undefined. Okay, so either it's zero or it's not defined. Okay, and these will be important for kind of thinking about what functions look like and, and you know how to solve some sort of optimization problems later on in the class. All right.